guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to show you how you can quickly and efficiently become a general in the frontline game mode. If you're interested in more reviews and gameplay, go to YouTube and search for World of Tanks with Bruce to get all of my videos or click on the subscribe button and now let's go. Alright guys, here we are in actually my first frontline game that I played in this season and um, as you can see we are on the defending team spawning on uh, Charlie and I selected the Burrusk as the first tank that I want to start with and now uh, this brings me to the first tip that I have for you in this game I want to share 10 tips on how to become a general very quickly and very effectively or let's say efficiently and uh, the first tip is select a mobile medium tank with good mobility now frontline is a um, is a game mode in which you play on a huge map so um, having a mobile tank is much more important than uh, to have a tank, let's say, with uh, with good armor. So as long as you have the mobility, you can um, relocate and you can um, yeah participate at the game and always be where the fight takes place. And uh, I do think that the Burrusk is a great tank. It offers great mobility, does have a great firepower. And um, other things that I would recommend are obviously the Progetto 46 maybe the best tier 8 tank in the game uh, but then also the Lorraine um, is a great tank and um, yeah there are, there are other tanks but I think those three tanks are certainly one of the best ones um, to use in frontline. Now um, I went to the uh, left hand side to uh, defend this position because it offers me quite some cover. Let's see if we can get a shot on the Tiger too. Here you go. Uh, the gun handling of the Rust is just superb due to the um, dispersion values, which are great, and um, they basically um, <clears throat> give us the opportunity to hit our targets, even though the dispersion is in general not that good. Alright, now we can finish off the Tiger 2, which is nice, and obviously we are spotted. Uh, so yeah, the Burrusk is uh, definitely a great tank uh, due to his uh, due to his mobility. Now the next tip I have for you is um, sacrifice strong armor and go for high firepower. A tank that has uh, superb armor is not of too much value because on such big maps you will definitely get flanked in your heavy tank, and so the armor is not as let's say not as useful as in a uh, random game mode. Now it looks like the enemy EBR 75 FL10 is uh, able to get a shot on us. I think he is on the little um, hill there. Yeah, here you go. Now he's spotted and let's see if we can get a shot on him. No, it looks like he is... Ah, here you go. That is a mistake. Let's see. Here you go. First shot and he's even not running away that means that we can take him out and as you can see we have managed to get the second rank which is sergeant just because um, we are using the high firepower that uh, this tank offers now autoloader tanks do have a high firepower so it is definitely recommended to use autoloaders in this game mode and um, the rust is working just fine um, and also the Lorraine 40 t is also working fine so um, yeah definitely do use um, those tanks those autoloader tanks and um, the fact that the Burrus does not have a, actually any armor at all is not a problem at all now we only have 65 hit points remaining so we definitely do need to fall back um, to not all right it is time to fall back um, so that um, the enemy Pantera cannot get a sh oh, okay. Um, the progetto crossed our way so we couldn't run away and now we are dead and so um, yeah let's take the second tank um, and now I am basically deciding for the uh, C-52 list the Polish 
premium tank in my opinion um, you should definitely use premium tanks uh, premium tier A tanks at the start of the battle um, because uh, Frontline is a great game mode in order to uh, to make credits. So if you have, play a tier 8 um, premium tank and then also select reserves so that um, you can make credits because this is um, a great opportunity which um, the Frontline mode offers. Now, as you can see, I relocated to Alpha because I think it is very easy to defend Alpha. And as you can see, um, we already have lost the um, Bravo segment. Now, as you can see, it will take five more seconds until we have uh, another reserve activated. Now we do have uh, one more tank. So the next tip I have for you is stay alive at least until you have fresh reserves. Um, because there is nothing more useless than you not being able to participate at the game, not making any damage or um, yeah, not being able to uh, collect XP or um, to make credits just because you are not participating because you do not have another tank. Alright, um, the good thing about the uh, C-52 list is that it has an excellent firepower, good mobility, so once again a nice tank and um, you can play hull down with this tank because it does have quite a good um, turret armor and that was my idea um, on the alpha segment to defend the alpha segment where the T-44 and the T-44-100 are fighting right now and therefore I selected a tank which does have a good uh, turret armor to play hull down and so I went for the C-52 list. Now We'll see, how, we'll see uh, whether our team is losing the... Okay, too bad. We got tracked by the enemy T-77. We will see if we are losing this um, flank. But for the time, I will just stay here and uh, try to make damage with my C-52 list. Because after all, this is what you want to do. Because um, yeah, defending a cap circle is the preferred option. However, if you are... Um, in a situation where you can constantly make damage, then just go for it and uh, make damage. Okay. Didn't penetrate the armor. Now, um, this situation right here brings me to the next tip, and that is tip number four, which is fight where the fight takes place. Always try to be engaged in some sort of fighting, um, because. Um, if you are on a flank that you or your team can easily control and if you are on a flank where there are only a few of um, the enemy tanks then um, yeah, you will have no problems in holding this flank, however you will not have the chance to constantly make damage because you are not engaged in where the actual fight takes place on the map. Now as you can see, as you can see I went for the Progetto uh, 46 because um, in general, I do believe that the Brugetti 46 is the best medium tank overall on tier 8 and um, its mobility is slightly worse However, than compared to the Burrus, however it does have a uh, great foul firepower, sorry, um, a 3 shot motor gun. Now I am knocking on the street to give me some additional cover and once the enemy is uh, approaching, the enemy tanks are approaching, I will be able to spot them and um, I will be able to get the first shot opportunity. Now, um, in my opinion, you should first of all select the playground where most of your teammates are playing. Because after all, let's say you would spawn in a position where the fight takes place, so to say. So where lots of enemy tanks are, are positioned. But where you don't have a lot of teammates, then uh, the enemy would be simply able to rush this portion of the map that you would just um, most likely die within a couple of minutes and you would just um, lose your tank without being able to make a lot of pressure so or a lot of damage. So um, preferred option is to select the playground where you have lots of support and this is exactly what uh, we have here in the Delta segment compared to the Echo segment. Now the second priority is uh, to select the playground where most of the enemies are because if you do have support of your teammates then you definitely do not want to spawn on a segment where you don't have any enemy tanks uh, because then you won't be able to make any damage and then the 
Third prior priority, sorry, would be to select the playground that offers best positions for your tank. So I would rather go to a flank, um, let's say in a hull down tank, where I am not able to play hull down. Um, if I would have support of my teammates and if um, in this segment, if there would be uh, lots of enemy tanks, um, just like on this Delta segment, as you can see right now. Okay, so we got... Um, rid of uh, two shots of our autoloader and now we have to run away because um, we definitely do not want to stand at this position or keep standing at, the, at this position once the uh, the enemy team is uh, advancing and um, it's only a question of time until they will have advanced further and won the flank and as you can see with the LT432 he will be dead in a second and this is not what you want to do because after all you want to still you want always preserve hit points and preserve your tanks um, so that you still have that you have some kind of reserve throughout the game. Um, this situation or this um, yeah this tip or this um, little comment brings me to tip number six or oh, sorry tip number five and that is conduct second line gameplay. Don't fight at the very front because. Especially on open maps like uh, the ones that I used for the frontline game mode, there are so many crossfire opportunities, and the only way to stay alive long enough so that you have um, that you have always a tank able to select to keep playing is if you conduct second line gameplay. So actually, um, I'm not doing a good job right here because the enemy team is uh, pushing me and as you can see I am in a pretty bad situation here and I will not be able to uh, get out of the situation. Alright, so that was actually a misplay by myself and I didn't follow my own rules which is to conduct second line gameplay. Now, um, um, I am definitely uh, using the Rusk once again and I will continue to fight on this position because as I said um, the Delta segment is where most of my teammates are playing plus there are lots of enemy tanks so the ideal situation for me to um, to make damage and to maybe spot some of the enemy team. So far we made uh, 4400 damage and we made 3100 spotting damage and now let's see if we can uh, continue to make damage. Now tip number six I have for you is use reserves in a smart way. So for example, if you are using or if you have your spotter plane available, then um, select a position where you can get the most support of your team. So that does not necessarily have to be on your flank, but that can also be on another flank. Just wait for the perfect moment and select the spotter plane once um, you are sure that you will have, this, you will have um, support of most of your team, because that is the moment where the spotter plane is um, very useful. Alright, for example, if you have the artillery, then um, wait until you can use the artillery to decap or if there is a highly unmobile um, tank destroyer because um, otherwise you would just uh, you would just waste your, your artillery strike and um, yeah it would be more or less useless all right um, let's see if we can get a shot on the Skoda T27 and uh, yeah, I think this one hit, and this the next one should also be a hit. Yeah, and as you can see, this is the strength of a of a autoloader tank. So um, this is why I prefer to play autoloaders in frontline because the firepower is just so tremendously high, and um, that is a, that is beneficial because especially on frontline, you are able to surprise your enemies and then to um, yeah just um, pump out the full clip and fall back into cover. Now it looks like we are able to hold this flame. Now let's prepare our tank and let's get a shot on the LT432. Here you go. And as you can see with every 
bit of damage that we are squeezing out, our rank keeps to, keeps to uh, increase. Now, um, tip number seven I have for you is once tier eight tanks, sorry, once tier nine tanks are available, definitely go for a tier nine tank because the tier nine tanks do have a much higher fire, much higher firepower than um, the tier eight tanks, especially if you can select a tier nine tank that does have a firepower of a tier ten tank. And I'm thinking about, uh, for example, the MX thirty. Uh, yeah, sorry, AMX 30 or the Leopard PTA, so tanks that have a tier 10 gun that you can use on tier 9 because then your advantage um, over the tier 8 tanks is even higher and so uh, go for tier 9 tanks as soon as they are available on the game and um, select the tier 9 tanks that do have the superb firepower, for example like the Leopard PTA. Alright, so we Let's squeeze out our two shots here on the Lorraine and now we definitely want to fall back to um, surprise maybe some other enemies and let's see Let's see if we can get the uh, artillery strike and that is what I meant I am pretty much convinced that in this area where the Kampfpanzer 07 RH was situated, there will most likely be also some other tanks, so let's um, not use the artillery strike on our flank, but instead let's use it to uh, defend the, the uh, cap circle in the echo quadrant, and meanwhile I want to get the first spot and first shot opportunity on the tanks right here, so let's see. Two shots on the AMX, yes, maybe if we're lucky, nice, two out of two, right, our, our engine is destroyed, however, we can obviously repair it, so not too much of a problem, and let's see if we can get one more shot, here we go, our clip has reloaded, nice, and we once again do it the first spot and therefore the first shot opportunity nice and we get a shot on the Skoda nice and Max is turning his turret so I definitely do need to shoot on the Skoda T27 and once again we were blocked by our teammate which is too bad however not much what we can do all right so uh, it's time to select the next tank and Right here I saw that um, as we have lost the Echo Quadrant, we are able to select a tier 9 tank and so I went for the AMX 30 and this brings me to tip number 9, sorry tip number 8 and that is um, as I said use the tier 9 tanks that do have tier 10 firepower, for example like the Leopard PTA or the AMX 30. Now, it is still important to select mobile tier 9 tanks, so go for medium tanks or light tanks. Um, but in my personal opinion, the advantage of tier 9 medium tanks is that they have a superb firepower and a good mobility, plus they do have much more, uh, much more armor. I mean, at least if you are talking about the turret armor of the AMX 30 compared to the um, compared to the to, or to most medium tier A tanks. So let's see, can we get a shot on this more? No, but maybe on the Kunze Panzer. Let's see. Yes, this one hit. Very nice. And obviously, if you are dealing 390 Alpha instead of let's say 240, then obviously your rank will increase even quicker. You received a shot from the Kunze Panzer, that is alright. So, um, I would not go for a um, for a heavily armored tier 9 tank because, once again, mobility is of much more use than uh, armor in this game mode because of the huge maps and because of the uh, possibility to relocate and uh, to conduct second line gameplay. Alright, looks like uh, the Zomor SM is uh, pointed towards us, so we definitely do need to relocate once again. 
and we will manage to, or we will try to keep our tank in the game and um, go to the repair circle to repair our tank. Now, if you've activated um, your reserve, for example here, to uh, inspire our teammates, then we definitely do need to make sure to drive close enough to our teammates so that they also get this, um, this advantage. Now, talking about the tier 9 tanks, you can also keep playing your tier 8 premium tanks if your focus is on uh, making credits. However, in my opinion, um, if you want to become a general, you should definitely go for the tier 9 tanks due to the fact that they are just superior compared to the um, tier 8 tanks. Now, tip number 9 that I have for you is obviously try to position yourself so that you can defend the cap circle because this is the most effective way to reach the next rank. If you can deal damage, that is nice. However, it is... Um, better if you can deal the damage to a enemy tank that is in your own cap circle um, and because this will give you more points um, and you will just reach the next the next rank much quicker if that is not possible however as i said then just keep doing what you are doing and go the let's say the regular way to the next rank now we are here waiting for the Zomua sm now it would be better to be on a on another flank just because the enemy tanks are um, yeah looks like there are not too many enemy tanks in this squadron plus uh, we also do not have too much of support of our own troops however um, so far we will just stay here and uh, try to decap and to get a shot on the uh, Sumoa SM and now I'm pretty sure he will stay right here, so let's use the artillery uh, strike to decap. And then um, I have tip number 10 for you. Um, only enter a cap point if you are on the attacker side. Only enter a um, uh, cap point if there is a realistic chance to win it. Um, so if you are an attacker, don't waste your tank too early trying to win a cap point, but instead. Um, Analyze the situation and only go to the cap if you have enough support and if you can be sure that you will be able to um, to win the cap. Yeah, so those are my 10 tips and as you can see, I think um, in this game, like um, my gameplay was not, um, not really um, what I would call excellent. Plus, I definitely did not use the, the reserves in, an, um, in, in the most effective way, in an, in an excellent way. So I definitely would think that there's uh, room for improvement, but even though we are on our way to uh, become a general in this frontline game. And as I said, that was the first game, this was the first game that I played in this season. And um, with those 10 tips, you will definitely be able to become a general in uh, the frontline game mode. Now, I do believe that the Leopard PTA is a superb tank for frontline once you can use tier 9 tanks because it does have a insanely strong firepower with its 420 Alpha gun. And um, yeah, the uh, shell velocity is also superb and this makes this tank an excellent sniper and an excellent sniper is definitely um, the tank that you definitely need in uh, frontline mode so in addition to this the leopard pta does have a good mobility so in my opinion the leopard pta tanks like the leopard pta i should say are definitely the ones to go for in the frontline game mode. all right here's another leopard pta however as we have spotted him nice he is receiving um, fire from our team. Now let's drive a little bit more to the right hand side so that he cannot get another, another shot on us. And yeah, we made general with only 9500 damage, 5000 or actually 6000 spotting damage. And um, yeah, this is how you become a general in the frontline game mode. So if you follow those 10 tips, then uh, I am pretty convinced that you will become a general and you will get all the bonuses that the frontline mode offers. Alright, we once again spotted some other tanks and as you can see our spotting tanks is just 
very easy in the frontline mode and um, very effectively. 2000, or let's say, you know, not 2000, but uh, 1200 additional spotting damage. Can we get a shot on the Su 130? Yes, of, of course we can with a sniper tank like the Leopard PTA. Maybe one more shot. I could actually load HE. HE is uh, super strong on the Leopard PTA. As you are right, we should uh, keep advancing actually. Yeah, we definitely should because we have the support of our teammates and uh, once we spot another tank, we will get the assistant, assisting damage. Alright, 10,000 damage so far, 7,000 assisting. Can we get a shot on the Pantera P44? Of course we can. And now we do have uh, some other reserves available. Select the spotter plane, maybe right here. Let's see. Yep, I think the T95 is the perfect stationary target for the artillery strike. And let's continue, let's try to relocate towards the middle of the map in order to. Um, in order to just. Um, get more damage is where the leopard shines with its mobility right 25 seconds remaining maybe we can get another shot and then yeah after all we managed to uh, become a general in this game and that is what you are supposed to do in frontline right Get a shot on no, those things are hidden behind cover. And uh, yeah, so um, all in all, 10,000, uh, almost 11,000 damage, almost 8,000 assisting damage. And um, yeah, keep those 10 tips in mind, and you will become general very quickly and very efficiently. Alright guys, that was it for today with my 10 tips on how to quickly become a general in the frontline game mode. What do you think about frontline? Do you enjoy this game mode or do you hate it? Do you like the possibility to play tier 9 tanks in frontline? Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Consider subscribing to my channel and i see you next time in another World of Tanks video.